Hi guys, Azure Reese here and welcome to the Heart Headlines and this is my discussion slash analysis follow up video to the amazing 2.8 trailer we got earlier today and wow it was amazing. This video, like with my Xenoverse 2 analysis video, I'm going to be going over all the little details in this trailer and going over my own thoughts about the trailer as well at the end. One thing I will say before diving into this trailer is, yes, the trailer is completely in English, which is absolutely brilliant because the Jump Festa 2.8 trailer was completely Japanese voice acted and not in English. So, without further ado, let's get into this analysis video for the 2.8 E3 2016 trailer. First off, we have Dream Drop Distance HD. There's nothing really new that I can talk about in this segment. It's, there's nothing to note other than the game is looking amazing. There's absolutely no pixelation in the game whatsoever by the looks of it. And it really looks like it's taken on the uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 graphical style because it really looks like Kingdom Hearts 2 if I'm being honest. So that's absolutely brilliant news. It's good to see that they're using the PS4's power to their advantage. Next, we move on to 0.2, and this is where the analysis starts to get juicy. The first things we see in this segment are shots from both Castle of Dreams and of Aqua, and they look absolutely stunning in that Unreal Engine 4, which is the engine that is also powering Kingdom Hearts 3. The next couple shots we get are of the bridge to the Castle of Dreams collapsing and of a weird clock on the castle that looks to be going out of control with the bridge collapsing and Aqua only just managing to escape with her saying The road collapsed when the clock advanced. And first of all, yes, it is confirmed that Willa Holland will be reprising her role as Aqua in 0.2 and most likely Kingdom Hearts 3 as well. I absolutely love Willa Holland's work for Aqua. It looked like we may have to beat the clock to advance through the bridge. However, we finally get into the glorious, glorious 0.2 gameplay as it shows Aqua sliding down what looks like the uh, collapsed bridge from the previous shot. And I must say, the game looks smooth as hell. She then cartwheels down off the collapsed bridge and then lands down on her feet and does a dodge roll looking thing as she lands, which I find really good for the gameplay as it looks a lot more realistic because in Kingdom Hearts 2, when Sora like jumped off a high like ledge or a high distance, he just kind of sluggishly landed on his two feet and it just didn't look right. And now with this aqua rolling animation, it looks a lot smoother and a lot more fluid than previous Kingdom Hearts games. I would also like to point out that the HUD or the heads up display that we are seeing for 0.2 for Aqua is the near enough the exact same layout that we see for Kingdom Hearts 3's. So I put both Sora and Aqua's HUDs beside each other and you can see that they are strikingly similar with the focus bar being above the HP on both of them, most likely for shot lock attacks as we've seen in Kingdom Hearts 3, they are for the shot lock attacks, but we don't actually know if they are in 0.2, although it's pretty good to assume they are. And we also have the MP bar for Aqua's magic that I will be getting into in a moment. She also says a very interesting quote when she's going down this bridge, and she says, Not even memories are safe from the darkness. Which plays into a part of the trailer that I'm going to be talking about later on, but it brings up a really interesting notion that I found while going through my analysis of the trailer. But we also finally get into some of the combat gameplay and first off, the gameplay segments of this trailer look so reminiscent to the pre-rendered video that we got for Kingdom Hearts 3's initial reveal video back in E3 2013. We have Aqua being zoomed in on from the back as she runs towards the Heartless and she also summons the Master Keeper or Master Defender, whatever your preference is. We also get the confirmation that 0.2 will not have the command deck from Birth by Sleep 
recorded in Dream Drop Distance, but we will have the command menu that we see in Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, 3 and Days, which is very exciting because the command deck is very, very unbalanced and it just isn't good. We've seen that time and time again, that there's always that one command that is very overpowered. We saw in Birth by Sleep it was Thunder Surge and we saw in Dream Drop Distance that it was Balloon, Balloon Rat and Balloon Ga. We also get to see Aqua very quickly pull up the shortcut menu, which displays four different magic mechanics that are returning in this game, which are Viraga, Blizzaga, Thundaga, and Kuraga. I believe what you're seeing right now is actually Aqua using Blizzaga, and it just looks beautiful. We've never seen this kind of blizzard attack before, it's always been a kind of projectile move that we've seen ever since Kingdom Hearts 1, we've never seen it look this way and it looks to be a lot more of a physical move, like it actually looks a lot like an attack we would see from the Diamond Dust command style in Birth by Sleep, which actually leads me into my next point. You see that just above? The shortcut menu where it says Spellweaver, that in itself confirms the return of the command styles in 0.2 as Spellweaver was actually the first command style that you actually obtain with Aqua in Birth by Sleep. We also see what kind of looks to me like a reaction command, which is kind of weird because they aren't in Kingdom Hearts 3, that's already been confirmed. We don't actually know what it is, but it's Definitely looks like a reaction command as when she attacks with Blizzaga, a triangle prompt appears on the screen which actually looks like it maybe fills the Spellweaver bar you see in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Another theory is that maybe the Blizzaga completely filled the Spellweaver bar as you know in Birth by Sleep. The more you hit an enemy the more it fills the command style bar so maybe it kind of works like that and once you have filled the bar completely, you press triangle to activate the spell weaver, as you actually do see a timer start to kind of count down when uh, they press the triangle button, but who knows. Next we see Aqua using what I presume to be Thundaga, which looks absolutely amazing. Multiple bolts of lightning come down and then strike into one huge one again, which actually does kind of look like the Thundaga in Kingdom Hearts 1, but then the triangle prompt does come up again for Aqua. We do not see Faraga or Kuraga at all in this trailer, unfortunately, so we're going to have to wait and see if we can maybe see them in another trailer in the future. We get something very exciting. We get to see the swarm of Heartless, or the big wave of Heartless, the shadows, that we see back, way back in the first trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3 back in 2013. In what looks to be outside the gate to uh, Castle of Dreams, so this is after the collapsing bridge segment. So once the swarm starts attacking, we do get to see what I can only presume to be the swarm's HP bar. As we can see the swarm has about three and a quarter bars of HP. So it's safe to assume that this swarm is either going to be a kind of boss enemy for 0.2 or a sub boss of some kind. We also get to see Aqua using barrier when the swarm attacks, which was her way of guarding in birth by sleep and was very useful as it allowed you to block from all directions any attacks. So I'm happy to see that return because the guarding for Ventus and Terra in Birth by Sleep was just awful and clunky. We then just get a couple of attacks on a single shadow with Aqua and then we get to see some gameplay of the Spellweaver command style and it looks absolutely gorgeous in the Kingdom shader. It's great to see that command styles are returning. I absolutely love the command styles in Birth by Sleep so maybe we'll get to see other command styles come back like Firestorm and Diamond Dust as well. And to end off the 0.2 segment of this trailer, we got a small cutscene with Aqua talking and looking up at the sky she says, Spend one more night beneath the stars with my best friends. As she reaches up to the sky which uh, that made me sad, I mean poor Aqua, she's went through so much turmoil. She has lost both of her best friends, she's doomed herself to being in the realm of darkness. It just it makes me sad. I feel so sorry for her. But we then get a good look at Aqua's model from the front and she looks gorgeous. She's, she's not a waifu for no reason. 
and it just shows here that she looks absolutely beautiful in this Kingdom shader. Her face is very well animated and a much needed improvement to the Jump Festa models of Kairi, Riku, Mickey and Yen Sid who all just looked like they were made out of clay and they moved, their animations for their face were just so clunky. She then sighs and looks down to the ground as she says, I'm doing it again. Which may mean that as she's looking up at the stars, she might be remembering or reminiscing about her times with Terra and Ventus in the Land of Departure, because a lot of the time in the Land of Departure, there was a lot of scenes with them, and it was an, at night time, and they were looking up at the stars and things like that. But then we get one of the biggest shocks of this trailer. And I don't think anyone was expecting this at all. If someone expected this, you are lying. But we hear a voice behind Aqua say, Aqua. <laughs> as Aqua quickly turns round, who do we see walking down the steps towards her? We see Terra. How the hell is Terra there? Terra never ever entered the realm of darkness in the entirety of Birth by Sleep. Not once. So how the hell is he there? Is it Terranor? Is it the normal terror we know? We don't know as right before the camera pans up to show all of Terra's model, it cuts just before his waist. So this goes back to what I said earlier about when Aqua states that not even memories are safe from the darkness. Could it be possible that the realm of darkness can create illusions made from the memories of people who enter it? Could Aqua be, you know, witnessing an illusion of Terra? Another plausible idea is the fact that possibly Aqua is having some sort of flashback or something like that and she's standing in the middle as she remembers but she can't interact with her past self or with Terra while they're conversing with each other. It's very weird and I was personally shocked and surprised to hear and see Terra because it was just not expected at all. But that ends the analysis for the 0.2 segment of the trailer and I will move on to the final segment of the trailer, the key back cover segment. And finally we move into the key back cover segment of this trailer, the final segment of the trailer. The first shot of back cover we get shows a man in a black Organization 13 coat who is holding I don't know, it looks like a dandelion, it looks like a flower, I don't know what it is, I think it's a flower, but it would be kind of cool if it was a dandelion, because that does kind of relate back to the dandelions of Key, which I'll get to later in the video, and he says, This world is full of light. Nothing much we can really establish there that we don't already know, but I want to point out that even this whole segment is in English, so we're getting a pretty pretty generous chunk of the key back cover script that's in English which is really exciting because it also confirms that back cover will be fully animated, fully voiced and will also be in the Unreal 4 engine like 0.2. We then cut to a sort of round table like setting as we get our first look at the foretellers in the Unreal 4 engine and my god they look amazing. We get a small insight into the story of Key as we see Ursus and Unicornus arguing as Ursus says Did you expect the traitor to give themselves up with that accusation of yours? That was foolish. With Angius intervening said, That's quite enough. A said being the actual name of Ursus. We do get to see all five foretellers in this shot as Leopardus has his back turned to the table while Unicornus and Ursus are arguing, and we also get to see Vulpius sighing after Angus intervenes. The next shot we get hypes me up so much as we see the Daybreak Town Plaza, and we see who else other than Ephemera or Ephemera sitting on the fountain with Vulpius, and Ephemera looks amazingly designed, I've always appreciated his design ever since I saw him in Key. But back cover has only heightened my liking to his design. It's so simple, but it's so nice as well. He says to Vulpius, Hey, maybe talking about the book will cheer you up. Presumably uh, referencing the Book of Prophecies, which is a major, major factor in the key storyline, as well as being introduced as a concept in the recorded cutscenes in 2.5. And I also must say, 
Whoever Ephemera is voice actor is sounds exactly like how I would picture Ephemera to sound. So whoever actually voiced Ephemera, they've done an amazing job of it. But Vulpace then replies saying, Not a chance. So, good game there Ephemera, at least you tried. The next shot cuts back to the man in the organisation coat who's just standing in a field and he says the oh so iconic and important words of young Xehanort from the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer back in, I believe it was E3 2015? I might be wrong there but I'm pretty sure it was last year and he says Darkness will prevail and the light expire. Something I want to point out is that this voice actor who is playing the role of the man in the black coat doesn't sound like anyone we have ever seen or heard in the Kingdom Hearts story before. When Key came out, most of us pretty much presumed that he was either going to be young Xehanort or Master Xehanort time travelling, so I'm going to go out on a limb and say we now have our seventh confirmed Seeker of Darkness, as it is not the work of Leonard Nimoy, the voice actor of Master Xehanort, before he sadly passed away. Rest in peace, we all love you, Leonard. The person they are bringing in to hopefully fill the void left by Nimoy or Ben Diskin, the voice actor of young Xehanor. So right now we have confirmed for Seekers of Darkness the uh, Master Xehanor, Young Xehanor, Xemnas, Ansem Seeker of Darkness, Zigbar, Syax, and now this mysterious seventh Seeker that is in Keyback cover, presuming that he is a Seeker of Darkness. The next shot shows a focal point of Key as it shows Angius and Unicornus conversing around the kind of round table room from the first shot as Unicornus is looking at I believe to be his version of the Book of Prophecies saying to Angius Each of our copies were said to contain the events of the future but this incident well, it's nowhere to be found Now what incident is he talking about? Well could he be talking about the Keyblade War and Key's timeline? Or is he talking about the Keyblade War between the Seven Lights and Thirteen Darknesses in Kingdom Hearts 3? Who knows there, we're just going to have to wait for more info on that. We then get a very distressing scene as we see Leopardus with his Keyblade out pointing it at Ursus as Ursus is walking behind him and Leopardus is backing away. It looks like Leopardus is about to strike at Ursus while he's doing this, he's saying, You can barely stay on your feet! Just give up already! Meaning that him and Arsis most likely have been fighting, and Leopardus looked like he had won. However, that is not the case, as in the next shot right after, we see Vulpace run into the same building, and we see Leopardus fall to the ground as Arsis is standing over him with his keyblade out. So, is it possible that Arsis has killed Leopardus? Who knows? But Vulpius says, Why did it have to come to this? Meaning, this may be around the time of the end of Key when the Keyblade War is about to happen and all the foretellers are fighting with each other. The next shot shows the man in the black coat and Unicornus conversing in a field as Unicornus asks, Isn't it our duty as Keyblade wielders to prevent this war from taking place? As the black coat replies, Not possible meaning that this black coat may be in possession of one of the Book of Prophecies and knows how the future will pan out, or he is, in fact, another Seeker of Darkness, and it may be possible that, for whatever reason, he was able to go back in time to his era of key to try and spur on the Keyblade War, which may be why it inevitably happened. I'm actually going to put out a theory video within the next week or two talking about this as I was actually thinking about this man in the black coat before this trailer was released. This man in the black coat really gives me a kind of Zigbar or Demix vibe. He's, I don't want to say cheerful, but he's kind of more carefree. He has a very Demix attitude about him, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But in the next shot, we see then that Angius and Ursus are fighting each other like we have seen in one of the recent story updates for Key. We also see Leopardus spying on Vulpius in Chirithi or Kirithi in between the fighting scenes with Angius and Ursus. We can also hear Ursus and Angius arguing in the scenes as Ursus says, We need to defy the Master's teachings to protect the world. 
Yes. With Angus replying, he was wrong. Which leads me to believe, going from the first quote of this segment, when the black coat says, This world is full of light, that the master of the foretellers is, in a way, a lot like Ericus, who obsesses over the tyranny of light, and now Ursus kind of believes in the way of Master Xehanort's thinking, and that the world should be an equilibrium between both light and darkness. And the final shot of the back cover segment shows all of the playable characters from Key, your Keyblade wielders, all gathered in front of Vulpace as she says, When the time comes, and there is war, you mustn't fight, but instead you must fly away from here to the world outside. Now what I believe this group of wielders is, is what re is referred to by Vulpace as her dandelions in Key, who are a group of chosen Keyblade wielders who are good enough to go to the realm of Unchained, which is a completely different realm to that of Key, which takes place in Unchained Key, with Ephemera being part of those dandelions as well as your own character. Now, before I end off this segment, one character that I want to stress is not in this trailer, before I close out and move on to my overall final thoughts, is the exclusion of Skald in this trailer. Skald is a very recently added character to the plot of Key, who was once in a party with Ephemera. The exclusion of Skald to me is very weird because Skald got introduced as a major character and it seems that she was the only major character that was left out of this trailer, so all of the other major characters are included. I mean, maybe they hadn't thought of Skull by this point, but I highly doubt that. Now it's time to get into my overall thoughts of this trailer. This trailer was just... perfect. It has given us everything we've wanted to see out of 2.8 in terms of trailers. We got English voice acting, we got gameplay of 0.2, and on top of that, we got English cutscenes from back cover, fully voice acted and fully animated. I cannot wait for this game's release, because at the end of this trailer, yes, we do get the amazing confirmation that 2.8 will be releasing in December this year, worldwide, which is a first time ever for a Kingdom Hearts game, as all the games prior have released in Japan before anywhere else. This gives me huge hopes for a worldwide Kingdom Hearts 3 release date. And finally, we get told there will be more announcements on Kingdom Hearts 3 in winter. Hopefully that doesn't mean we won't get anything related for Kingdom Hearts 3 in E3 next week. But who knows, we all knew this year was going to focus on 2.8 since it's releasing this year, so it's not all too surprising. But nevertheless, if you guys liked this very long-winded analysis video, please leave a like, comment your thoughts, what do you think about 0.2 in back cover and are you excited for 2.8? Share this amongst your friends and subscribe to join the Azure Army today. Thank you.